Welcome to The Man of Recaps. This is The Matrix Original Trilogy. Keanu Reeves is Thomas Anderson, who goes by the hacker alias Neo. He's surfing the interwebs with his dial-up 56K modem when he gets a mysterious message, follow the white rabbit, Alice in Wonderland style. He follows the girl with the white rabbit tattoo, and here he meets a mysterious woman, Trinity, who long story short, invites Neo to join her leather-clad super hacker club. Their leader is Morpheus, a man who can only speak in deep, mind-blowing one-liners. He offers Neo the iconic choice, take the blue pill and go home now, or or take the red pill and learn the truth about reality. Now you should never take mystery pills from strangers because things get weird, but not nearly as weird as when Neo wakes up in a sci-fi goo pod. Morpheus picks Neo up. Welcome to the real world. That's right, the world we thought we lived in is nothing but a computer simulation called the Matrix. The real world, unfortunately, is an apocalyptic hellscape. Humans invented artificial intelligence, but the machines rebelled and we went to war. Classic. The machines were all solar powered, so humanity scorched the sky to block out the sun. But apparently, the human body body generates a ton of electricity, so the machines now farm humans to be their batteries, and they created the Matrix as an invisible prison for our minds. There's a prophecy, though, about a messiah-type figure called the One, and Morpheus believes the One is Neo. First things first, though, Neo needs some combat training. He downloads martial arts directly into his brain, which is why he famously says, I know kung fu. Morpheus is like, show me, and these movies do have incredible, super sweet choreographed kung fu fights. And because they're in a computer program, they're allowed to bend the laws of physics a little Little bit, letting them pull off some impossible stunts. But the Matrix is a dangerous place because anyone who's still plugged in can be taken over by an agent. Agents are the security programs that are stronger and faster than any human could be, but that's why they hope Neo is the one. And so it's time to jack into the Matrix, where our crew all wears leather and sunglasses, you know, to blend in. Neo has to meet with the Oracle, who's got a bunch of potential the ones here. Little spoon bending kid lets Neo in on his secret. There is no spoon. Oh, mind blown. The Oracle is a cookie baking grandma type, but she has bad news for Neo, he's not the one. On the way out, Neo sees the same cat twice. Whoa, deja vu. Deja vu? That's a glitch in the Matrix. Our crews walked into a trap, and of course, if you die in the Matrix, you die in real life. Soon an agent shows up, and Morpheus fights him so Neo can escape, but the agent's just too strong. Our crew was betrayed by one of their own, this douchebag Cypher, who made a deal with the machines to put him back into the Matrix. Even though he knows it's not real, ignorance is bliss. Luckily, though, their operator tank is able to zap him with the laser gun and get Neo and Trinity out of there, but Morpheus is still inside, being interrogated by Agent Smith, who gives the famous speech, humanity is a virus. So Neo's like, hey, I'm not the one, but I think I can still save Morpheus, but to do it, we're gonna need guns, lots of guns. This whole next scene hits differently now that mass shootings have become so tragically common in America, but still, it's one of the greatest action sequences ever as Neo and Trinity bust in there for an epic shootout. Yeah, running up walls, slow-mo cartwheels, ow! But up on the roof, an agent is fast enough to dodge bullets. But when he shoots back at Neo, now Neo's fast enough to dodge bullets too! Epic bullet time limbo skills. Long story short, they rescue Morpheus. He and Trinity log off, but before Neo can, Agent Smith's here to stop him. It's an epic showdown. Agent Smith has the upper hand, but Neo pulls some awesome moves. In the end, Smith's got him. Time to die, Mr. Anderson. But my name is Neo, and I'll flips out of there, defeats Agent Smith. But he doesn't stay dead, he can just possess the next person. And meanwhile, in the real world, the squid machines have found their ship. They can't blow their EMP while Neo's still jacked in. So it's a race against time as Neo hunts for a landline. But Smith was ahead of him and oh, shoots Neo multiple times. He's definitely dead. But now Trinity's like, you can't be dead. The Oracle told me I'd fall in love with the one and I'm in love with you, Neo. And it works. She sleeping beauties him back to life. He rejects death and is now a fully realized the one able to stop bullets with his mind. Now fighting the agents is trivial really easy. In fact, he sees the source code of the Matrix and knows how to jump in and delete Agent Smith. So he gets out in time, they take out the squid robot, and the day is saved. Neo is the one ready to win the war, and also he can fly now. Next up is the Matrix Reloaded. In the real world, it's time to visit the last human stronghold, the underground city of Zion. It's a cool place where they like to throw retro-futuristic caveman techno raves. Now Neo is the one, but it would be pretty boring if he easily beat everyone, so the agents got some upgrades and they can still have sweet fights. He revisits the Oracle, who's like, I didn't technically lie to you, you weren't the one at the time. But now that he is the one, he realizes she's not human, she's a computer program. She's like, yeah, you know, it's just like people, there's good ones and bad ones, I'm on the side of humanity. So she tells him what to do next, he needs to find the key maker to access the Matrix mainframe. But first Neo gets a surprise visitor because Agent Smith is back. Apparently he didn't delete him, he just freed him from his old programming, so now Smith can do whatever he wants. And he's learned a new trick, he can now copy himself, so it's the epic multi-Smith fight. Neo seems to have things pretty well in hand, but more Smiths keep coming and pretty soon it gets out of hand 
and Neo pieces out of there Superman style. So now they need the Keymaker, who's being held by a program called the Merovingian, whose vibe is a rich French douchebag. He doesn't want to give him up, but his wife's mad at him, so she leads him to the Keymaker. So now he has to sick his white dreadlock ghost brothers after them. Neo stays behind to fight the rest of his gang, and he can still stop bullets, super sweet. So it's time for the awesome Chateau fight, where they all grab medieval weapons off the walls. Meanwhile, Morpheus fighting the Banshee brothers, but it turns into a big highway car chase that quickly gets wild. Morpheus has a duel, Katana vs. SUV, and somehow Katana wins. Trinity grabs a motorcycle, going against the flow of traffic, Morpheus fighting an agent on a semi-truck. In the end, boom, big crash, but Neo flies in there just in time to save him. So the Keymaker leads Neo to the secret mainframe door, and inside it's a room with a ton of TV screens, and he meets the architect of the Matrix. He's very verbose, ergo the anomaly inexorably arrived. But basically, he explains that the one is the result of a rounding error, 0.0001% of people reject the Matrix. But he drops a big truth bomb, the machines know about the one, and have planned for it, the entire prophecy is just another level of control. Right now, the machines are tunneling to Zion with enough of an army to wipe it out, just like they've done seven times before. The real purpose of the One isn't to win the war for humanity, but it's to be the first members of a new Zion and restart the whole cycle. But Neo's having none of this. He's like, yo, screw you, man. I'll take my chances. Meanwhile, Trinity is in some trouble. She was fighting an agent and is falling to her death. So Neo flies faster than ever, and oh, he catches her. Unfortunately, though, she was hit and is dying, but now it's Neo's time to save her. He reaches into her code and gives her the handheld defibrillator. Whoa, back to life, and the day is saved. Except, of course, the day is not saved at all. Neo fills him in that Zion's about to be destroyed, and the prophecy is a lie. And right now there's a bigger problem when the machines destroy their ship. Now Neo's the one powers only work inside the Matrix, but now he can feel the machines in the real world, and oh, he stops them, zaps them out. He passes out, though, and that's where Matrix 2 ends. So now it's time for the epic conclusion in the Matrix Revolutions, which, unfortunately, is just as bad as you remember. Neo is still passed out. Apparently his mind is trapped between the Matrix and the real world, or something, I don't really know. And so like Jack Sparrow in Pirates 3, our main character spends the beginning of the movie doing nothing by himself. Eventually, though, our crew comes to rescue him. They gotta make a deal with the Merovingian, but Trinity makes him an offer he can't refuse, and they're reunited. So Neo goes to see the Oracle again, and he's pretty mad she didn't tell him about the prophecy being a lie. She's like, sorry, kid, but I told you what you needed to know at the time, and you gotta trust me. Things are different this time. We can break the cycle because there's a new variable, Agent Smith. In fact, soon Smith comes to see her, and he's become cartoonishly evil, smashing her cookies. And now he turns the Oracle into a Smith clone, and it becomes the Super Smith. So our gang wants to go defend Zion, but Neo's like, hey, sorry, the Fellowship has to break up. I need to metaphorically take the ring to Mount Doom at the machine mainframe. Trinity's going with him, Sam and Frodo stick together, but there's a Gollum stowaway. Back in Reloaded, Agent Smith copied himself onto one of the freed humans, so Agent Smith's got a physical body creeping around in the real world. But now he's got Neo right where he wants him with no the one powers, and so they have a boring no-powered real world fight. In the end, Neo gets blinded, but that's a good thing, because now he can see the code inside him, or something. Something. Meanwhile, the army of Squiddies is coming for Zion, and it's the actual cool Zion defense scene where humanity's got these sweet machine gun mechs, yeah! But in the end, they're just too outnumbered, and things look bleak. But wait, who's this flying in? It's Morpheus with his ex-girlfriend, Jada Pickett Smith. They bust in there just in time to set off their EMP and take out all the squids. Maybe should have led with that. So Zion is saved for all of five minutes till reinforcements arrive. So humanity's last hope is Neo and Trinity, who make it to the machine mainframe. They have sort of a rough landing, though, and Trinity dies. No resurrections this time. So Neo goes solo to see the machine main brain. Like, hey, bud, let's make a deal. Agent Smith's gonna destroy both worlds. I can defeat him in exchange for peace. So they jack Neo back into the Matrix, where it has become fully Smithtown. And so it's time for the final showdown, Neo vs. Super Smith. At this point, though, they can both fly, so it's an epic Superman fight. In theory, it's an awesome aerial kung fu battle, Dragon Ball Z style. But unfortunately, it didn't turn out that good. It's kind of a bland CGI mess. In the end, though, Agent Smith is going to win, but Neo refuses to give up. I've got free will, and I choose to keep fighting. So Smith copies himself onto Neo, and it looks like Smith has won. But he doesn't know Neo's plugged into the mainframe, who's now able to, like, delete him for real, and boom, all the Smiths exploded. Neo has finally gone. Full Jesus sacrificed himself to save humanity. The machines keep their promise. They leave Zion, and inside the Matrix, it's the dawning of a new era of peaceful coexistence between machines and humans. And that's where the original Matrix trilogy comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And if you love this recap, check out the join button and support the channel as a member.